Welcome to the Spare Time Physicist. Today, I will explain how magnetism can be understood from Einstein's theory of relativity. Now, many excellent videos on this topic is already out there, but here I want to address a widespread misunderstanding about this. People seem to believe that magnetism can be understood as an electrostatic effect. An example of this is the current version of the Wikipedia page on the topic. It states that the chosen reference frame determines whether an electromagnetic phenomenon is viewed as an effect of electrostatics or magnetism or a combination of the two. As I will now show, this is not the case. Magnetism must be understood as an electrodynamic effect. Now, what do I exactly mean with the terms electrostatic and electrodynamic? In an electrostatic analysis, you find the charge of a given object by simply subtracting the number of negative particles from the number of positive ones. This is for example how you find the charge of an ion, and in this case it seems to work just fine. But in an atom, the particles are not at rest. And as we shall see later, the electric field of a charge changes when it is set in motion. So when I refer to electrodynamic, I simply mean that we have to take motion into account. Now, you might think that this is obvious. After all, isn't magnetism all about moving charges? Yes, it is. But I have something very specific in mind here. If a charged particle is in a magnetic field, it will only experience a force if it is in motion. And this force will be proportional to the velocity of the charge. But what if we viewed the situation from the perspective of the moving charge? If a coordinate system moved along at the same velocity as the charge, the charge would be at rest. And then the equation tells us that no magnetic force will occur. Luckily, Einstein's theory of relativity allows us to jump between different frames of reference. And in that way, we will get an insight into how the charge experiences the situation. What we will see in the rest frame of the charge is that an electric force of just the right magnitude occurs. So in the rest frame of the charge, magnetism is an electric phenomenon. The question I want to discuss here is whether it is electrostatic or electrodynamic. If you're not already familiar with the basics of magnetism or with relativistic length contraction, which we will need in a moment, I have linked to some helpful videos in the description below. You might want to go and watch those before you continue here. I believe the misunderstanding about the electrostatic nature of magnetism originates from an example given by Richard Feynman. In this example, Feynman analyzes parallel motion next to an infinite wire. So let's first take a look at that. As this animation illustrates, we have a current flowing in the infinite wire with positive and negative charges moving in opposite directions, but with the same speed. Because we have the same density of positive and negative charges, the wire is electrically neutral. But the current produces a magnetic field which attracts the moving test charge. Let's now shift to the rest frame of the test charge to see the situation here. Here, the positive particles will have a lower velocity and therefore be less length contracted. On the contrary, the negative particles will have a higher velocity and be more length contracted. Due to the different spacing of the positive and negative charges, the wire now carries a static electric charge. And the static electric force in the rest frame turns out to be equal to the magnetic force in the original frame. From this, magnetism really looks like an effect of electrostatics. But I'm about to show you that this is not a general solution. Before I do this, it is important to mention that I am a spare time physicist. And the results I'm about to show you are based on my own calculations. They have not been reviewed as the ones you will find in a scientific journal. I do hold a degree in physics, but please listen with healthy skepticism and add a comment below if you have any corrections. You will of course find all of my calculations in the description. Before we go to the solution, let's have a look at an example where the static analysis fails. Here we have the same wire as before, but this time rotated 90 degrees. This means that the motion of the test charge 
will now be perpendicular to the wire. Again, the wire is electrically neutral and produces a magnetic field. The test charge will experience a force perpendicular to its motion, in this case negative y direction. Let's now jump to the rest frame of the test charge. We will view the situation at the coordinate time of the test charge to be able to compare the forces between the two frames. What we will see here is that the wire is now closer due to length contraction, but the distance between the charges in the wire is unchanged. This happens because the transformation is independent of the Y coordinate. So no length contraction occurs in the wire and it remains electrically neutral. The test charge is at rest and is not affected by the magnetic field. Using Feynman's electrostatic approach, we would have to conclude that no forces act on the test charge. And this is of course incorrect. So the static analysis failed when the motion wasn't parallel to the wire. How can we then understand magnetism as a relativistic effect? Well, I already gave you the answer. The charges in the wire is in motion and the electric field of a charge changes with its velocity. When a charge is moving, the field becomes dependent on the angle between the field point vector and the velocity vector. As velocity increases, the strength of the field in front and behind the particle will decrease with a factor of 1 over gamma squared. Here gamma is the relativistic Lorentz factor. In the direction 90 degrees to the motion, the field will instead increase with a factor of gamma. As we shall now see, the dynamic nature of the electric field, taken together with length contraction, will end up giving us the expected electric force. The easiest and most fundamental way to understand this is to consider just one pair of charges in the wire. If we can show that the right forces occur from one pair, well, then the same will be true for a sum of many pairs. In that way, we will have shown it to be true for the full wire. I've made this file, which you can download in the description and play around with yourself. You will also find a document where all the underlying calculations are explained. What is important to understand here is that we are looking at an overlay of two systems. The elements with unprimed names are in the rest frame of the wire, while the primed elements are in the rest frame of the test charge. At position S are both the negative and the positive charge. The vectors Vp and Vn show their respective velocities. Note that since the two charges are at the same position and have antiparallel velocities, their electric fields will cancel each other out. The two dotted lines represent the wire in each of the two systems. In the primed system, the two charges are no longer at the same position. And we now see an x component in their velocities. The black vector u shows the velocity of the test charge in the unprimed system. The vectors e'n and e'p are the electric field at the position of the test charge in the primed system. The vector e prime is their sum. Down here, the brown vector shows the magnitude of the magnetic force in the system where the wire is at rest. The green vector shows the magnitude of the electric force in the system where the charge is at rest. Note that they are not just graphical representations. The two forces are independently calculated from each of the two systems. And the fact that they have the same direction and magnitude shows that our electrodynamic approach is correct. To demonstrate this, for more than one scenario, I have created the sliders above. U and V are the velocities and ranges from 0 to 1, where 1 means that the particles move at the speed of light. If I turn V to 0, the forces disappear because we no longer have a current in the wire. If I turn U to 0, the test charge is no longer in motion and the primed and unprimed systems becomes 1. If I now shift the Y position of the charges, we can see that the positive charge gets closer to the test charge than the negative. Nevertheless, the electric field of the negative charge is still stronger, though it is further away. This is because of the different angle of motion of the two charges. Remember that the field 90 degree to the motion gets stronger, while the field in front and behind becomes weaker. In a static analysis, we would have gotten a faulty result. But the dynamic nature of the field saves us. It is intuitively hard to grasp, 
that the total electric field maintains the same direction as we vary the position of the particle and the angle of the wire, but it does. This file is quite fun to play around with and it gives us a beautiful insight into the nature of magnetism. Hopefully you now have a better intuitive understanding of magnetism as a relativistic phenomenon. The conclusion here is that magnetism cannot be seen as an electrostatic effect caused only by length contraction. It must be seen as a combined effect of the dynamic electric field and length contraction. So I hope you have enjoyed the first video on this channel. I am planning to make many more like it in the future. So if you found it useful, please consider subscribing and hit the like button. Thank you for watching.